Welcome back everyone to another devlog of Slimeland Evolution. I am Savu, your game devil, and this is my idle incremental indie game where you few slimes, gather huge amount of jellies and defeat evil slime spirits. If that sounds interesting, watch till the end and let me show you the epic new content I added for this episode. So in the level select screen that I showed you last week, we had 4 types of islands, grass, desert, snow and volcano. Each of them is a separate level where you can send 6 of your slimes to defeat one slime spirit. The new additions to this roster are now the jungle island, the crimson island and finally the corruption island, totally not inspired by terraria. Of course, for each island icon there is also a tileset to create and at that point I would like to tell you that I got so much help from Pixel Overload a very talented pixel artist who has also a YouTube channel that you can check out with a link in the description. We will work together in creating sprite assets for Slimeland Evolution and if you are lucky enough, you may see a collaboration video from both of us together. If you would like to see something like this, please let us know with a comment down below. Ok, with all the beautiful tilesets you just saw, I managed to implement a very useful tool which is called a rule tile. With this, you just have to assign all available sprites of each tileset and come up with some rules. And that's the tricky part. I spent quite some time before this actually worked as I wanted, but I think it looks really good now. This will definitely save me some time when drawing new islands for the fight scene or even upgrading the main island with our slimes to a bigger size. The next thing I did was to adjust the camera for the game. This is something I wanted to do a long time ago, but always put aside. Now that I'm planning the alpha testing of Slamnut Evolution, it is necessary to fix this and I added the pixel perfect camera to solve the problem. A bit of smart googling and here you go. I use a 16 by 9 screen ratio which is 480 by 270 and it can be upscaled to HD as well. These extra functions are a bit strange to use but after this devlog I will try for the first time to export the game. Please wish me luck on that. I will probably post about my attempts to achieve this on Discord and talk more about it there. Great, now that this is out of the way, I encountered the next problem. The UI needs to be scaled as well, so that its pixels fit the rest of the game. Have you ever heard the term Mixels? This is what I want to avoid and eventually fix in all my pixel art games. I mean, I'm a professional and the game must look as good, satisfying and juicy as possible. Pixel Overload was again here to help and as you can see the old UI was thrown completely out of the window and got replaced with this elegant new one. Now the colors match really well together and the size of the UI has about the right size. Not too big to be annoying and all over the place and not too small forcing you to put on an extra pair of glasses. Here even the jelly got a reskin and I bet you now want to gather it more than ever before am I right? Yes, I am for sure. Now after so much work it was time for a refill since I need that coffee to keep me going for a long and hard day. As you can see me preparing it, let me quickly tell you that I updated my Patreon page where you can support me so that I can continue to upload videos and work on the game while also managing to have an income. It really helps a lot and it's more about knowing that even a small percentage of you watching this really believe in my content and want to be part of my journey in becoming a full time indie game developer. Ok with that said, let's sit down again, play a chill lo-fi music and continue the work. You may haven't noticed it in previous devlogs but there is a bug where when you throw a slime in the ocean it returns to the center of the island but stays there forever. Maybe it is just shocked from its ocean adventure I thought but with a little bit of debugging I figured out that it was my fault all along with an error in code. After fixing it all slimes can now continue their walk and don't give a f about being thrown in the ocean. Great. The next thing on the list was not to add a new feature but to remove an old one. Remember this little guy? When you clicked on him you could see the slime power of each slime. But imagine you have 20 slimes on the island. Yes, it would look awful and you wouldn't even see the numbers. Therefore this system is now, as much as it hurts, cancelled. But don't worry, you will be able to check each individual slime power together with more slimy info in the shop by clicking on each slime. This makes things much easier for me and for you as well. 
Now, I always say it's an incremental game, but where are the incremental mechanics? As for now, unlocking jelly producers, gathering jellies from them and upgrading them with even more jelly is one game loop and it's strongly based on trying to have as much as possible of this blue jelly. With that in mind, I wanted to display these huge numbers in a way that is both understandable and easy to read. Therefore, I needed a dictionary and the official mathematical way of naming numbers. I mean, would you like to see this or this? Exactly, and this is how it looks like in action. We all start low and can gather small amounts of jelly, but as we play more and more, you can see that the number get also bigger and bigger. I've played so many idle incremental games, some were indie games and some not, but one thing I lacked in all was the enormous amount of game currency someone could get. Same here, and soon I will code a new shop system with upgrades and passive buffs which you can then get by spending jelly. Some buffs will affect your producers and their speed, and some buffs will increase your slime power giving slimes extra abilities and higher damage. This is what you need after all, in order to progress through the levels we talked about earlier. The good thing is that I can now create much easier such systems since I have found a way to store and count this incredibly amount of jelly I harvest. If you have questions or want to add some idea in the game, let me know and I will be happy to talk with you about it. And with that said, I am very happy with the state of the game and I also have so many plans for it that I will share with you in the upcoming weeks. What you can do to always get all news and behind the scenes footage is of course to subscribe and ring the bell. I hope you enjoyed this week's devlog and if so, feel free to give it a like, it won't hurt anyone and it's just a nice way of showing your support and kindness. Ok, thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you next time, ciao!